people up in your business. Thank you, Sun Gray. After four decades of running a small business called Arkansas Flag and Banner, now simply flagandbanner.com, my team and I decided to create a platform for not just me, but other business owners and successful people to pay forward our experiential knowledge in a conversational way. Originally, we thought we'd be teaching others, but it didn't take long before we realized that we were the persons learning. Listening to our guests has been both educational and inspiring. To quote the Dalai Lama, when you talk, you are only repeating what you already know, but if you listen, you may learn something new. After listening to over 200 successful people share their stories, I've noticed some reoccurring traits among most of my guests. Belief in a higher power, they have the heart of a teacher, and are creative because business and life are creative in itself. And they all work hard. Before I introduce today's guest, I want to let you know if you miss any part of today's show, want to hear it again or share it, there's a way, and Sun Gray will tell you how. All UIYB past and present interviews are available at Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy's YouTube channel, Facebook page, the Arkansas Democrat Gazette's digital version, flagandbanner.com's website, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Just ask your smart speaker to play Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. And by subscribing to our YouTube channel or flagandbanner.com's email list, you will receive prior notification of that day's guest. Back to you, Carrie. How do you tell the story in one hour of my friend, Mr. Robert Trailer, a 94-year-old man who sired seven children, held the office of Arkansas State Representative in 1971, smuggled gems out of Africa. Was it Africa, Bob? Uh, Bangladesh. Colombia. Colombia. Oh, even yeah. better. Gave up alcohol in his 50s and proudly became an early adapter of the healing powers of pot all the while exploring his talent for painting, discovering his love of art, and showing his works at the Arkansas Art Center's Delta exib- ex- Exhibition for the past, let's see, and showing his works at the Arkansas Art Center's Delta Exhibition for the past 30 plus years. Well, this is how you jump right in. It is my great pleasure to welcome to the table, man of many lives and stories, Mr. Robert Trailer who I call Bob. Hey, Bob. Hi. Thank you, Carrie. You're welcome. I don't think I know this. Where were you born, and who are your parents? Were you born in Arkansas? I was born in Little Rock at the old St. Vincent's. What did your mom and dad do? Uh, My father was a Little Rock businessman, uh, real estate, and my mother was a housewife. Everybody was a housewife back then. That's right. Um, So you later went into real estate, and we're going to talk about that. But I just need to tell our listeners that I have known you since I was a teenager. Out of your seven children, I hung out with about three of them and spent many a night at your house. You were married to Rita, a nurse. How did y'all meet? Uh, We met at a med school dance uh, in approximately 1949 did you want to have seven children or was it all just an accident well both uh (laughs) are you an only child yes and also rita was an only child so she wanted to have six children we uh had an accident and had seven (laughs) david are you listening (laughs) <laughs> you're an accident you know back then in the i guess that would have been in the 50s mostly every child seems like was an accident yes ma'am you know i kind of feel sorry for people did today because they have so many choices if you ever had to choose to have a child i'm not sure i would ever choose to have one but it sounds like you oh, and rita great. did <laughs> you're welcome Thanks, son great <laughs> <laughs> yes we did you know in the intro i talked about uh, some of the things you've done, but you also had an insurance company and you had Titan uh, Mining Company where you mined for coals. Yes, ma'am. So after uh, college, or did you go into this? You were a World War II veteran. So did you go to college first or did you go to World War II first? I went to Hendrix one semester when I was 17. And then went in the Merchant Marine when I was 18. Um, I think this is really interesting. But I am interviewing 
a woman who is from Bremen, Germany, during World War II, and she's coming on the radio show. And I look forward to. I read her book. Her I read her memoir, and I look forward to interviewing her. And in getting ready for your show, I saw that you went to Bremen, Germany, as one of the places that you uh, visited or occupied while you were in World War II. Tell us what Bremen was like then. Uh, it was completely demolished. They had bombed it into oblivion. There was little left of the town when I was there. Why were you there? Uh, I was in the Merchant Marine, and we brought uh, goods, uh, food, and munitions and other things into Bremen for the U.S. Army. This was right after the war was over. Yeah, they really, uh, everybody that was in Bremen, I believe, had to evacuate, according to this book I read. So you get out of you get out of the service, and you go to Hendricks College. Yes, ma'am. Went back to Hendricks. Graduated in 49. And then what'd you do? Did you know what you wanted to do? Uh, I imagined myself as a salesman of some type, and uh, I joined my father in the real estate business, both building uh, houses and selling them. Mm-hmm. And when and then you met Rita. Yes, in forty nine we married in fifty, and then. You got into insurance next, or how did you, how did you how did your career evolve after that? I worked with my father in the real estate business and also the insurance business, and he built the Rose Motel and uh, on the Pine Bluff Highway. In the 50s, I helped with that, and uh, I formed an insurance agency and uh, sold insurance for a number of years. The Rose Motel. Yes, ma'am. You held on to that for a pretty long time. Yes, ma'am. What year did you sell it? Uh, It was sold in the 70s, mid-70s. You say the Rose Motel on the Pine Bluff Highway, but I think of it as being on Roosevelt Road. Yes. And and it changed from when your father built it. That was the old Pine Bluff Highway in the old days. Mm -hmm. And then it changed. Uh, That whole strip was widened into four lanes and went into a bit of a disrepair. Yes, and the interstate uh, was built right next to the Rose Motel. So the interstate was the usual way of getting there. Mm-hmm. Um, when you were in the um, when you were in the um, real estate business, is in the insurance business. Is that when you had your offices in the train station in downtown Little Rock? Uh, that was when I was uh, mining coal in western Arkansas. Oh, so when you were in the insurance and real estate business, you were in your dad's office, I guess. Uh, m- mainly in the tower building at that time. Mm-hmm. And then when you started mining coal, you moved it over to the train station, and that's where Buster's Restaurant is. And we need to talk about Buster's Restaurant. There is a lot to say about that era in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I want to find out about how you decided in the 1970s to run for office, but this is a great place to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with my friend, Mr. Robert Trailer, who I call Bob. A 94-year-old man who sired seven children, held the office of Arkansas State Representative in 1971, smuggled gems out of Columbia, gave up alcohol in his 50s, and discovered art and drawing, and now has been showing at the Arkansas Art Center Delta exhibit since, I guess, the 1980s. We'll be back after the break. 
You're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of flagandbanner.com. Over 40 years ago, with only $400, Carrie founded Arkansas Flag and Banner. During the last four decades, the business has grown and changed, along with Carrie's experience and leadership knowledge. In 1995, she embraced the internet and rebranded her company as simply flagandbanner.com. In 2004, she became an early blogger. Since then, she has founded the nonprofit Friends of Dreamland Ballroom, began publishing her magazine, Brave, and in 2016, branched out into this very radio show, YouTube channel, and podcast. In 2020, Carrie McCoy Enterprises acquired OurCornerMarket.com, an online company specializing in American-made plaques, signage, and memorials for over 20 years. If you'd like to sponsor this show or get involved with any of Carrie McCoy's enterprises, send an email to me, Gray, that's G-R-A-Y at flagandbanner.com. Telling American-made stories, selling American-made flags, the flagandbanner.com. Back to you, Carrie. Thank you, Gray. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with Arkansas State Representative in 1971, Mr. Robert Trailer, a 94-year-old man who has a big life and continues to while still living in his big house in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Before the break, we talked about World War II, Bremen in Germany, how destroyed it was. We talked about uh, going to Hendricks College, working for your dad, the Rose Motel, and now we've moved into... Uh, your business in the train station which you said was coal mining so how do you go from insurance and real estate to coal mining Uh, i've always had an interest in mining during world war ii when i was 15 i worked at a bauxite mine in bauxite arkansas an underground mine uh, the uh, aluminum industry was uh, very important to the war effort at that time. I, at 15, I drove a truck and uh, worked at the mine. That uh, interests me in mining, and uh, since then, I've done coal mining and some bauxite mining of my own you drove a truck at 15 and worked in a bauxite i bet you can't do that anymore at 15 probably not uh the uh a trooper stopped me and uh uh wanted to see my chauffeur's license and i told him i did not have a license i was only 15 and he scratched his head and said, well, you go on. No <laughs> problems. Uh, I had a load of, uh, of workers in the back. I drove them every morning from Little Rock to Bauxite. And he said, uh, I don't know how to handle this when you just go head on. He didn't want to do the paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> right. So a load of people that you drove from on the outskirts of town or you drove from town out to the box site that wanted to work in, that were minors, I guess? Right. I picked them up every morning at 5 o'clock and drove them to the box site mine. In the company truck? Yes. Did you take the company truck home at night? Yes, ma'am. Wow, things have changed so much. Today, you would just get sued to death if you did something like that. There oh, are yeah. so many rules today. But back then, it's the war. You got that lot bigger fish to fry and problems to solve than some 15-year-old taking people to their work every yes, day. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we, you, you know, we, we can just nickel-dime ourselves to death with these uh, laws today that sometimes are not very, uh, are not very helpful because you might not have learned you loved uh, mining if you hadn't had that job at 15 true i started working at 15 also i think it's really important for kids to get a good work ethic and start working early you're right well thank you bob (laughs) so y'all know that show bob newhart yes so you know his wife suzanne plachette Mm -hmm. so did you know there's a drinking game that every time she says the word bob you take a drink 
No. Well, no. all I can think can, about. We can do that during the show. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Every time I say your name, Bob, I think I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, so you're getting the coal mining. Now, that's expensive. Do you own the mine yourself? Uh, it was leased. The mine was leased. Is it an Arkansas mine? Yes. Because coal mining used to be kind of a big industry here in Arkansas. Yes, it did, and it has declined. There's very little mining coal mining in arkansas today why would someone lease their coal mine when they've got it and they're like well i could make more money if i mined it myself why would they lease it why wouldn't they just mine it themselves uh it entails a lot of investment and uh you have to sell the coal you've got to have a program to to uh get it uh, out of the ground, and then have it delivered. So it's more complicated than you think. And uh, today there's little market for coal. Yeah, so why'd you get out? You saw the writing on the wall? It, uh, the uh, demand for coal, uh, about approximately 1980, it had declined to the point that there was not the demand for it. Already starting? Yes. When did you decide to run for representative on the Democratic ticket? I ran first in 68 and was defeated and... uh, decided to run again in 71 and was elected at that time. I decided because I felt like uh, Arkansas uh, needed positive representation and uh, I felt like the time had come for me to to run. What did you not like? What was the representation that you didn't agree with? Uh, that was what the times that you would say the old guard was involved mm-hmm. in politics. Things were changing. Uh, uh, Arkansas was coming into a new era, I felt, and uh, a new beginning. So I wanted to be part of that. Who was the governor at the time? Uh, Dale Bumpers was elected the same year I was elected, and there were 33 new members of uh, the Arkansas House elected at that time, which was a huge turnover in representation. We felt like a a new era was coming into the... uh, government at that time so i think it was mostly democratic then right uh we had two members of the republican party in the house and one republican in the senate at that time well it sure has swung the other way (laughs) yes it has do you think that's because of gerrymandering uh no not so much as just the mood of the country and of Arkansas, I think. Mm. You um, went back to, you went back, I, you know, I just want to say, because I need my kudos here, that I uh, worked on your campaign. And I appreciate it. <laughs> no kidding. Still <laughs> appreciate <laughs> I remember we I re- went out and, and uh, we campaigned up and down the streets. Yep, all over. Yes, we did. I went to uh, strip malls and handed out your flyers. And then I went in the back of a truck and wrote, because you could ride in the back of trucks back then. And I rode in back of trucks around the heights and handed out flowers. And your son, who just recently passed, rest in peace, Robin, was driving. And I remember we went a wrong way on a one street. We were all screaming. 
<laughs> <laughs> but it was great fun it was a great learning experience too i think you had a what was your slogan it was something catchy you remember what it was it wasn't uh, it wasn't uh oh no it was your song uh uh, uh song trailers not for sale or rent he's for good government oh my god that was it <laughs> that, that was, was it. it i can't believe i pulled uh, that out uh, <laughs> right <laughs> wow i love that i know it is there was more to it but that's all i can remember i'm doing good to get to that so all right let's talk my on. slogan was trailer tries at that time there yeah. you go oh, i like that mm-hmm. there was also uh we had hats that we yes. would take a bite out of because there was a cigarette commercial that said something like i'd rather eat my hat than switch and and in the commercial was a pla- was a hat with a bite out of the bite rim. out of it why did your campaign have that we handed out hats with bites taken out of them all the time huh. yes and uh let's see they were straw hats made out of straw or look like yeah looks straw like straw hats uh-huh. yes why did we do that you remember uh, we wore things around at that time that advertised. Oh, I guess we were just wearing it, and that was everybody was wearing those hats with bites out of the rim, and I guess we just had Bob Trailer on one of those hats. Yes, we did. We took the uh, for cars and uh, placed it around the the hat. We took what? Uh, like the, playing cards. Uh that uh we placed on cars oh. that were uh stuck strategically stuck placed for bumper advertising stickers oh. uh bumper stickers and they went around the the hat oh yes i got you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you put bumper stickers around the rim around the uh, rim the, of the yeah the top of the hat, top of the hat. yeah mm-hmm. um all right let, you went to ualr when did you decide so you get out of the coal mining. I guess you're still in real estate. I guess you're still in insurance, right? Right. Uh, you're at the train station, though. Yes. This is Buster's heyday for everybody that remembers Buster's heyday in the train station. It was a great time to go down there. That's when you had two martini lunches. Yes. It was a, It was great. I'm just telling you. Of course, we didn't get anything done after that. But they didn't <laughs> have the internet back then, so you didn't really need to do anything <laughs> after that. Right. Uh, uh, but you decided to quit drinking. Is it because you were had your business above Buster's? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, I, I still drink a little bit. Not very much. I don't think it's good for me. No. (laughs) Okay. Solid answer. I can't complain with that. All right. We're gonna we're gonna take another quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with my friend, Mr. Robert Trailer, Bob. Another chance to take a sip. A ninety (laughs) four year old man who sired seven children, held the office of Arkansas State Representative in nineteen seventy one. Was a coal miner, investor, was an insurance agent, was a real estate agent. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about his life as an artist. He has been exhibiting at the Arkansas Art Center for over 30 or 40 maybe years. And he went to UALR for a little while. And we're not going to skip and forget to talk about how he smuggled precious gems out of Columbia. This is a good story. We'll be back after the break. We're not doing anything now. We're just going to have him put something in there. Okay, I'm coming back. You ready? All right. All right. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with Arkansas State Representative in 1971, Mr. Bob Trailer, a man with a big family and a big, big life. Before the break, we talked about World War II, Bremen, Germany, Hendricks College, real estate, insurance coal mining buster's restaurant your campaign in 1971 as a house representative under the democratic party and now i want to talk about the story where you decided like you said earlier at the break that you were really interested in uh uh what how did you put it not coal mining but geology maybe um so what made you decide that you were going to go to columbia and buy 
gems to come back and sell in America? Uh, I had a friend uh, that was uh, going to Columbia, and he invited me, uh, particularly if I would help invest with him uh, in, uh, in the venture. So I agreed, and off we went. He had been there for before, and uh, he was interested in uh, buying gems there. Did you not know Columbia is a scary place? It uh, it was somewhat scary at that time, yes, but. Uh, we we didn't have any problems as it turned out i thought you did i thought you had to get in a chase to get to the border because am i making this up didn't you have a Sounds chase exciting. down there uh there we went to a mining town and it was re, uh, reported that uh, uh it was in the mountains, and the seven miles into town was uh, a spot where they would uh, uh, rob you and kill you if necessary. And uh, yes, we when we left the town of Musso, uh, we drove very fast and uh, we saw people on the road that might have tried to ambush us. But that was the only real problems that we had. Uh, the next two days later, there were three people killed on that road and uh, were robbed. You're either bringing money into the town or you're leaving with the gems. So one way or another, uh, they would uh, ambush you. Did, you. did you go do it again or did you just do it the one time? You said, you know, I have a bunch of kids. I better not do this. Uh, uh, we just did it one time. Uh, we went up to the mine. They allowed us in, and we uh, went to where they were mining the uh, what gem emeralds. Em oh, emeralds. Emeralds. Mm. Emeralds. And uh, this is uh, one of the most productive areas of emeralds in the world there. And the Columbia government, uh, they regulate it. So everything goes through the government. So if you buy emeralds without, except from the government, you are breaking the law. Therefore, we had to, you might say, smuggle. <laughs> we just carried them out in our pockets. I think that would be called smuggling <laughs> or stealing. No, we paid, <laughs> yeah, we we paid, paid for them. Yeah. Oh, there so you go. So we didn't steal them. There you no. go. Uh, also, when we were in uh, the main town there, we purchased uh, uh, emeralds that uh, supposedly they, they had smuggled. Smugglers had smuggled, so we bought uh, we bought them there also. What would be a black market? Dirty, dirty emeralds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Did uh, did you make any money on the deal? Uh, Was it worth the effort? Nah. <laughs> Didn't make a great deal of money, but it's very interesting uh, situation. Yes. Yeah, it's a story you can tell Dude, 50 yeah. years later on the radio. Right. And, right. Then, and, and 
and I'm sure being a person that likes that sort of mining, you were very fascinated by the way they did it. Yes, I was. I had no idea uh, exactly how it was done. However, it is uh, illegal. That type of mining today is illegal. What type of mining is it? Uh, They started with a mountain and would uh, uh, use dynamite and blow it up and push it off the mountain and till they got down to the uh, to the minerals and then they would take those out where are emeralds in the mountain are they in the very center or are they all over uh, they they are encapsulated into lenses that uh, uh, are in the mountain you can see the see the uh, emeralds and uh, of course most most of it was uh, just removal of rock and dirt and uh, this was pushed off into streams and polluted the streams and they have now outlawed it now you have to do hard rock mining in the mountain follow the vein itself how big is an emerald is it a big or there is it a lot i mean you see little emerald rings and stuff so are they all just a bunch of little small deposits or is it a big rock and you and you break it up with the into smaller ones it uh it's smaller uh most of it you have to to break out and uh the emeralds are usually not very large Mm -hmm. it's probably got the emerald right in the core and then there's all this geode around it i guess yes uh crystals it it's embedded with crystals oh I bet those are nice, though. Uh, They're not sellable? No. Oh. So, uh, what year is this? So I can just get my bearings here where I am. Uh, This was in the 80s, early 80s. So now you decide to get out of the insurance and real estate business, I guess, or out of the coal mining business. What are you in now? What are you doing? When do you decide? You're not in any of those now. When did you, did you decide, okay, I'm going to get out? Uh, I had uh, real estate holdings uh, with, and I had a building, a apartment building on 3rd Street where my office was. I had uh, apartments there. And uh, I ran that apartment building and other real estate that I own until two years ago when I sold and moved my operation to my house. I still have real estate holdings around the state. Oh, you started UALR once you hit 60. You were telling me, because I'm past 60, you can go to school for free. Yes, ma'am. What did you take? I took uh, art and geology, archaeology. Course. And uh, history. And, uh, but mainly art was uh, my main subject. Um, I want to talk about your art. And I want to take the last break, and then I want to come back and talk about your art. It's fantastic. You you paint with a lot of color, which is exactly the kind of art I like to buy. When we come yeah. back, we'll continue our conversation with my friend Bob Trailer, who held the office of Arkansas State Representative in 1971, smuggled gems out of Columbia, which you just heard about, gave up alcohol in his 50s, became an early adopter of the healing powers of pot all the while exploring his talents for painting, discovering his love of art, and showing his works at the Arkansas Art Center's Delta Exhibition. When we come back, we're going to talk about his art. (laughs) Ta-da! Not me this time. All right, now we're coming back. We're doing all right. 
Oh, you're doing great. Isn't it interesting? I told yeah. y'all it was fascinating. I'm super into that gemstone story. That I know, right? That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you're listening to up. Okay, I'll start over here. You're listening to Up in Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with Mr. Robert Trailer of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Who would give up the? Do- who would? Gi- I'm starting. I'm sorry. Over. What? <laughs> you're listening to Up in Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with Mr. Robert Trailer of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Who would give the Dozeki Beer Man commercial, the most interesting man in the world, mm-hmm. a run for his money? All right. If you're just tuning in, we have been talking about world. We started at World War II, mm-hmm. and we have come all the way up to the present, where he is still running his real estate holdings out of his home, Mr. Robert T- Trailer is. And we've talked about his mining operation, his insurance operation, his... his uh, Campaign for state. Rep. Oh, good That you one. participated in. That I participated in, thank you. And I sang a song, too, just a minute ago. Yep. Sorry. Everybody. Yeah, please go back and listen if you haven't heard it. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about um, your art. Um how did you decide to get into your art? And I believe it was in the 80s when you started painting. Did you always know you had a love of painting? Or yes. You yes. did? Oh. Yes. Uh, I, I liked and was interested in art uh, when I was in junior high school. I started. And uh, I didn't feel like I had time to devote to it. Uh, until I reached about 60 and decided I would join the Art Center. That was in 1985, and I've been a member ever since. And took I took lessons, well, took courses at UALR for about 10 years, and... Uh, enjoyed every minute of it yes so the art center's closed right now yes it is so what are you doing now uh actually they moved the school the art school to uh a old uh grocery store uh on uh Downtown oh. Little Rock. Oh, on so Cantrell. The school on, on Cantrell. Cantrell. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. And uh, it operated for a while till the pandemic, and now they've closed it. So uh, probably it's been closed for a year. We'll probably open again this summer. And uh, the art center going under uh, construction, it's supposed to open next uh, summer spring the arkansas art center delta exhibit you've been participating in that ever since i can remember uh i have uh i've been accepted one time oh. for a uh a piece that i did i i don't uh i have submitted before and not been accepted. I've been accepted one time. Yes. Yeah, You're going to have to start giving more money to the art center. I, guess. I know. Cool. It. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so you don't sell your art. You gave me before the show, you gave me a calendar that is absolutely stunning of your art. And you like still lives, too, which is unusual. Yes. Not a lot of people paint still life, I don't think. Uh, I try to do everything. From uh, start from just plain old art to uh, some special, special uh, paintings. And also, I do ceramics. Oh, you do? Yes, ma'am. So, you do a lot of color, too. You paint with a lot of color. I've always liked color. I do, too. The more color, the better, I figure. Me, too. So what's next for you? Uh, I'm headed for the Buffalo River uh, 
May 1st, I'm going to float the buffalo one more time. We have an annual, uh, for the family, I have an annual get-together on the Buffalo River every year. Didn't last year because of the pandemic, but for the last, uh, well, since 87, the family, we've had an annual float trip on the Buffalo. So May 1st, I'm headed to the Buffalo. Float Trailer flotilla. Yes, ma'am. We usually have about 30. Well, that's just your family. Yes. <laughs> and a few other friends, yes. Well, you've always kind of liked the water also because you have a houseboat on the Arkansas River. Yes, ma'am. You still have it? Still have it. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I've had it since uh, the 80s uh, and uh, have enjoyed it greatly. You, What do you think about the new uh, Little Rock Yacht Club that John Burkhalter's putting in? It's uh, very fancy. He's got a lot of uh, a, a lot of docks down there, and uh, there are more and more boats on the river. So I'm sure he'll have lots of boats there before he's food. I, you know, there's never been enough uh, docks on the river, and now we've got two new fairly recent docks for people to use the river more right we and, sure do and the river's always high now so you can't use it as much uh, it comes and goes it mostly and comes down. these days <laughs> and during the uh, 80s i took a trip down the arkansas down the mississippi to new orleans in the houseboat and then across to Mobile and up the Tin Tom waterway to Paducah, Kentucky, back down the Ohio Mississippi River to the Arkansas River and back to North Little Rock, Arkansas. That sounds so fun. How long did that take you? It, uh, well, I did it in four uh, uh, trips and it took about a year but it actually took uh, a month if you never stopped right it was about 3,000 miles and took I think it was 28 days in all cool so you would Take it to down, you take the Arkansas River to the Mississippi, like maybe at Memphis, and spend the night in Memphis. No, no. Uh, it The Arkansas comes into the uh, Mississippi below uh, Memphis. Memphis. Oh. At Helena. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, and, right. And uh, uh, we, left, we left the boat in New Orleans and came back several months later, took it to uh uh across to mobile and up the ten tom riverway uh to alabama left it there then came back took it to uh memphis left it at memphis and then back to north little rock how old were you when you did that you had to be retired it was 80, uh, yeah, I would have been in my 60s. I've been on that boat. It's slow. Very slow. <laughs> Very it, slow. It, it'll it go 10 miles an hour. There you go. That's a lot. Takes a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the most harrowing thing that happened to you on the trip? I know there had to be one because I've been boating enough in my life to know there's always a harrowing experience. Uh, we were on the Tennessee River uh, headed headed west, and uh, all these boats started going by the other direction. 
at a high speed. Listen to the radio. There was a tornado coming. We turned around and followed the boat. Uh, we pulled in a uh, spot behind a little island. And the tornado hit about that time. It uh, uh, tore down the trees and the electricity and uh, more or less mm, tore up the uh, uh, around us, the land around us. But we were protected by this island and... Uh, that was about the most exciting, I think, was the tornado, yeah. which didn't have anything to do with the uh, the trip, of course. It just happened we hit the tornado at the wrong time. It's a single engine, isn't it? In your boat, yes. a single engine. Those yes. are kind of hard to steer. No. It's, no? <laughs> no it's, isn't a twin engine easier to steer? He's got it covered. It can be, yes. Yes, in that you can maneuver it more. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yes, one engine is uh, it's pretty slow, but it'll get you there. It's a great little boat. It's uh, What year is that boat? Uh, 67. Vintage. You know, I'm just thinking about being on a boat when the tornado is whirling around you. I mean, tornadoes are not nice to boats. Did you stay on the boat or did you jump off and get on the island? Because if you're on a boat and a tornado comes, you could end up you could end up half a mile uh -huh. down. No, we stayed on the boat. Who were you with, Danny? Danny, I knew my it. son, Danny. Mm. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's a good story. Do you sell any of your artwork, Mr. Bob Trailer? Uh, no. No, I don't. Uh, I give it away mainly to my children, uh, some to other people that might want it. I've got my hand up. Okay. <laughs> All right. All pick right, me one then out. You, I'll pick you one out. You, You've got it. Oh, boy. I'm so happy. You uh, you have painting, You have painted for so long, you're going to have to give some of it away or take out a warehouse space. Well, I wish I devoted more time and effort to it. But the, you know how things are. I know. Okay, I can't let you off there without talking about you were an early adopter of marijuana and the health benefits of it. Tell us why. Uh, I found that, uh, and I have studied it some, that uh, it's a very good medicinal. Uh, it is has many very good quantities qualities uh, for uh, for your health you name it it will help most any problem that you have well I feel like it's the new snake oil it does they say it does it cures cancer glaucoma inflammation uh, mood mood swings I mean they say it does all of this stuff. And I'm like, well, which ones does it really work on? And it seems to me like it should give you, uh, it should not be good for your lungs. Uh, no, it isn't good for your lungs. That's why you eat it. Do you eat it or smoke it? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Some of both. There you go. So uh, is it? do you take any kind of anti-inflammatories or is it really good for inflammation? It is very good for in inflammation. Inflammation, yes. Uh, no, I don't take any any drugs. None. None. Ninety four years old. So far, so good. I love it. Well, he's a walking testimony to the medicinal benefits of marijuana. There you go. Yes, ma'am. And you've been smoking. You've been using marijuana for forty years, I think. Thirty five, maybe. I will say this, though, Bob. You didn't start till you were in your 60s or 50s, 50s or 60s. Right. It's not, it, it, it is a low motivator sometimes for young people to do it too much. I wouldn't recommend it. 
Yeah, there you go. All right, this is it. I've really enjoyed talking with you so much. Will you come back on your 100th birthday, please? I I certainly will. And I want to commend you for this wonderful program you've been putting on for, what, 10 years? Five. Five years now. And it's a wonderful, informative program. Thank you, And stay with it. Okay, I will. All right. She's planning on it. I am. I enjoy it. Thank you. I have a present for you. You brought me a calendar with all of your art in the calendar, so that's your present to me. And this is my present to you. It's a U.S. and Arkansas desk set. Oh, thank you so much. Mm, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I am going to put it on my desk. There you go. That's the perfect place for it. I want to tell all our listeners in closing, thank you for spending time with us. We hope you've heard or learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening, and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, or your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. For links to resources you heard discussed on today's show, go to flagandbanner.com, select radio, and choose today's guest. If you'd like to sponsor this show or any show, email me, Gray, G-R-A-Y at flagandbanner.com. All interviews are recorded and posted the following week. Stay informed of exciting upcoming guests by subscribing to our YouTube channel or podcast wherever you like to listen. Carrie's goal is simple, to help you live the American dream.